Uh, hello, my name is Alan, and today I'm facilitating a session of Aegon. Uh, this is a game by John Harper, John Harper and Sean Nittner, published by Eagle Hat. Um, I have lightly reskinned the game uh, away from the base uh, Greek heroes returning uh, from a great on a great odyssey to um, Dark Age heroes uh, on on missions from their gods, uh, from the Celtic gods of old, uh, in the Celtic other world. Um, and there, are, there, there's negligible difference in the rules. Just a bit of reskinning of uh, which gods do which. Uh, this game has been organised as part of the Gauntlet RPG Community's uh, monthly uh, events, uh, game events calendar. If you don't know about the Gauntlet, please look us up uh, and you'll find uh, lots of uh, interesting stuff and lots of great people to play with, uh, just like these. If you want to know more about the Gauntlet, I'd refer you back to our first session, um, or indeed the first session of any of my, my games. Um, and uh, as was the other thing to say is that we are playing with some safety tools. Uh, the, all of these players have played with me before, so they, they know which safety tools I'm using. There is a tab uh, with our current lines and veils, so I'd ask the players just to check in there because they may have changed from last time because today we're introducing a new player who may have added some. Um, if there are any others you want to add, folks, please do. Um, the only thing I will note is that the, the ask first on betrayal and violent conflict, be, conflict between PCs is there principally as an aid memoir for me, because this is a game in which the heroes are competing to a degree. Uh, it's, it's a slightly contentious point, I think, for some of us, but um, uh, maybe all of us. But there is a degree of competition between the characters. Um, it's, it's not bloody. Uh, you, you, all the heroes are going to be embarked on uh, a, a quest uh, where it is in all their interests that the quest succeeds, uh, but quite who comes out with most glory and therefore reputation uh, may be a factor that they want to consider. Um, and I'm sorry for Alexi who's coming in uh, in session two of now three sessions uh, because he's, he's, he's starting on zero glory where some of them picked up glory in the first session. But I'm sure it's all about the way the dice fall. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine this time. So they, they need all the handicap they can get. To, yeah, precisely. Uh, you know, precisely. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, you know, it's lapping them so much glory. Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, that's undoubtedly the case. Um, uh, so, uh, so with no further ado, I'll remind myself that my uh, my pronouns are he him. And then I will run across the uh, the character keeper, please, from left to right. Um, start by asking Will, say hello, and tell us something about Blackwin Silverhanded. Hi, uh, my name is Will, pronouns he, him. Uh, that was my character, Blackwin the Silverhanded, a, uh, a brute, hooking brute of a man uh, who tends to speak with his, uh, well, with his axe rather than with his mouth. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, last session he, uh, put an end to uh, this sort of civil war between these two tribes by uh, beating the opponent senseless and uh, offering to spare his life if he just bloody listen. And uh, yeah, that's him. And he did. Mm. Um, uh, and that's where your your tighter title, Breaker of the Storm Rider, I think is coming from. Okay, uh, moving along. Uh, Sabine, say hello, tell us about your pronouns and introduce us to Airman, uh, Monster Hunter. Hey, I'm Sabine. I use any pronouns. Uh, I'm playing Iamon, the monster hunter, who uses he, him pronouns. Iamon used to wander the countryside, taking odd jobs of hunting down monsters, basically. Recently, he's married a, a princess who then became a queen. And now he's in the Celtic underworld trying, well, basically to get back home um, and also figuring out how to make stuff work here. Iamon used to be not much of a talker, but what can you do, right? You can't let Blackwind do all the hitting and then, then no, nothing gets done. Well, things get done, but we have to channel these things. Anyway, he kind of last time, he, at first he kind of talked to, he kind of talked to people, even though they thought he was not very fitting uh, person to talk about matters of state, which he dis uh, disputed successfully. And at the end, uh, while the 
duel between Blackman and the Stormbreaker rider, whatever happened. Uh, there were earthquakes and rains flying around and everything being a bit chaotic and all the warriors kind of lost their shit and Eamon was uh, up there and got everything from being swallowed by earthquakes and floods and stuff like that. And so he has taken the uh, epithet Shepherd of Warriors. Thank you for that. Uh, Ferret, say hello and uh, introduce us to Vikinda. Hello, I'm Ferret, also known as Sawyer. I also use any pronouns. You cannot misgender me unless you're being a jerk. Don't be a jerk. And uh, I am playing Vikinda the Man Tamer, who um, last time drank her way to success by uh, improving relations with this band of warriors by uh, Harnessing a cornucopia full of ale as her uh, drink of choice. And other than that, I'm looking forward to getting into more trouble and getting some more glory. Uh, which is what this game is all about. Glory and reputation. Um, and finally, a new player this for, for the rest of this series, Alexi, say hello and introduce us to Ethel Flayed. Hello, hello. So I am Alexi, uh, he, him, and you can follow all of my gaming endeavors online at Cloven Pine Games. Uh, in this series, I'm going to be playing uh, Lionhearted Ethelfled. Ethelfled, daughter of Chenwolf. I think Chenwolf is probably a minor king of some Mercian tribe. Uh, and uh, so she has, um, uh, you know, she, so, so she's a princess of sorts, uh, a, uh, you know, a noble uh, warrior woman of the Anglo-Saxons. Um, uh, her patron god is Brigid. Uh, I think it's one of these things where her father always uh, told her Brigid was a goddess. Her mother told her Brigid was a Christian saint, and she's still a little a little confused, you know, at Brigid's exact nature. But she knows that Brigid has watched over her and watched out for her during her life, so she has devotion to Brigid, whatever she is. Um, and uh, she's armed with a uh, with decorated armor, a sling, and a sword. She has piercing eyes and dyed hair, uh, and uh, she is she is uh, suddenly part of this war band as well. Um, and I have to say, uh, looking at the picture, um, a a wolf skin, not unlike the one that you are wearing. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Got to have one of those. Um, so the setup for this is that uh, though some of these these uh, heroes are Christian, some of them are pagan Anglo-Saxons, um, they have been chosen by the old gods of the Celtic mythos uh, because they have no skin in the game of the Celtic mythos. Uh, the, the gods, each of their patron gods has chosen them for some obscure reason, we know not which, uh, to try to work out how a battle within the Celtic other world ends up. So they, they've been told that, uh, that how they perform in the other world will, uh, will either resolve the fate of the other world and therefore of the mortal world that, and, uh, that is underpinned by it. So who knows? Uh, it's, it's a decent premise for adventure. And so, um, uh, as in all games, I think, uh, produced by John Harper, this is a very structured one. So at the start of uh, each of our sessions, we will deal with the journey to the next location. Um, so we are starting here with what is called the fellowship phase. And I, I'll just read you the fellowship phase because it's the first time we've done it. Um, the heroes relax and enjoy each other's company. Taking turns, each hero explain, asks one question of another hero. Uh, that player answers, then both heroes take a bond with one another. Um, uh, then the next hero player moves around asking of a player who hasn't been asked yet. Um, and so everyone should get asked a question um, and uh, this will develop uh, more bonds. And the questions are intended to allow characters to be fleshed out. So these can be questions about their life in the mortal realm or here. Sorry, you had a question, Sabine. Yeah, you said that uh, to regain our bonds with the gods, we should have a sort of ritual sacrifice thingy that the person with the highest glory should lead. That's what I gathered last time. Um, there, there's a set stage. There's fellowship, which is this one. Oh, okay. Then there's sacrifice to the gods, which ah, is about okay. divine favor. Okay. Then there's cool. leadership. 
and okay. then there's the next location. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Thank I'm you. trying to stick to the book. Um, so, uh, so let me start. Let me go. Let me again go go back around the way I started. Then, so Blackwin, which of our heroes do you want to ask to ask a question of, and what is the question? You can put away your ale, Vicinda. Where did you? <laughs> where did such a slight lass as yourself pick up? Uh, pick up such an appetite? I've worked around men my entire life. I find them easier to uh, manipulate if they have their senses uh, muddied while I keep mine clear. Aye. <laughs> he laughs, raises a, raises a jug to you. <laughs> um, and each of you will mark a bond with the other person. Uh, moving along, Airman, uh, who will you ask a question of? I think I would ask a question of Esselflaed because I don't know her much. And I would ask her how she gained her episode. Well, Blind heart hearted. That <laughs> seems courageous. I'm glad you ask, uh, Eamon Monster Hunter. Uh, my father always told me uh, he, would, he would need me to learn how to lead men on the battlefield and as uh, a noble of our people. Uh, so I admired from a young age the lions in the bestiaries that, uh, that mother's, mother's priest had brought from the continent. And I thought those were the noblest of animals and the ones best able to lead. So I decided I would be Lionhearted Ethel Fled. And no one's no one said nay. So there it is. Interesting to take a name for yourself. I, I like it. Seems a bold choice. Each of you gets a bond with the other character. Uh, mm. Moving along. Uh, Vikinda, who of the remaining uh, characters will you ask a question of? I think uh, Eamon and uh, I think uh, Vikinda is um, curious about uh, your marriage and uh, will ask uh, did this uh, come back did your uh, nuptials come about uh, due to emotion or due to devotion? I'm not sure what you mean like, but what's, uh... Like, was this like romantic or a deal? Oh, this was very romantic. I, I mean, I, I huh. actually I was escorting her to her betrothed. Then she ran away because she didn't want to marry him. I followed her. Her betrothed followed her. Her betrothed turned out to be a demon. I killed the demon. And then kind of things kind of got romantic and we got married. Incredibly lucky. Yeah, I guess I am. Um, uh, each of you uh, gains a bond with the other character. And for our viewers, if you'd like to tune into the Jotunweird channel on my YouTube channel, you will find uh, that story in some detail. Uh, and finally, uh, let's come to Ethelflaed. Uh, Ethelflaed, I, I don't think you have any choice who you have to ask a question of, um, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So she 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 will approach uh, Blackwind, and she'll say, "Silver-handed one, you made you made quick work of that uh, that dangerous combat." I made quick work We're, of everyone. Is there is there anything that shakes your courage, or are you always like this? Uh, and Blackwin looks at you and says, uh, fear is for people who have something to lose. Mm. Yeah, Ethel Flood just kind of just kind of like takes that in, you know, like raising her eyebrows a little. And each of you gains a bond with the other character. And if you'd like to know more of Blackwin's background, please see the playlist, the Yotan Weird playlist <laughs> in my YouTube channel. Um, deep lore. 
Um, and, uh, and so that is, that is the fellowship phase. Now there is the sacrifice of the gods. Now this uh, this is uh, ringmastered by the character with the with the current greatest glory, which I think is Blackwood. Uh, no, sorry, it's Aemon. No, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Um, yes. And um, and this could be a sacrifice. Any sacrifice you describe, uh, it, it's not a literal sacrifice. Um, in fact, we have we have uh, a a line on harm to animals. So uh, live sacrifice is not on. Uh, but it could be valuables, food, wine, song, poetry, some kind of competition, anything at all that takes your fancy, Airman. So how do you celebrate, let's call it celebrate the gods? Um, well, I will tell you that I'm not usually a follower of my people's old gods, but that when I was younger, my grandmother, shortly before she died, told me the story of uh, stories of Ariane Norod who was a was an important goddess actually she was uh, she was some and i'm telling the story of i'm sorry i i don't i didn't do the research but uh, Eamon will then go on and tell the story of uh, how ariane rod faced certain tests that she had to prove her virginity and her um virtue and that uh, that she plays, she was a powerful sorceress, and she was known to to curse people who crossed her. But she was also known to bless people who did not, who were honest, and who did not attempt to take away what is hers and her from from. Uh, who did not attempt to, let's say, dominate her and lock her up. And that this, uh, and that she gave her, uh, to her son uh, enchanted weapons that behooved him well in, a con in contests and fights. And that I would wish, since we are here, and this is clearly happening, that she would look kindly on us, as kindly as she looked on her son, because as I've been told, all the children of men are the children of the gods, so we are all her sons and daughters. Okay. Um, now, I roll a d6, 2d6 to determine uh, what the challenge for this, uh, this sacrifice, how, whether the gods are, uh, are keen or not um, on what they've heard. Um, so the, the, the challenge level is a simple five. So you have a five to beat um, uh, or equal. Uh, to prevail in this contest. It is a uh, resolve and spirit contest for everyone. Um, uh, let's start with Airman. Um, so it is, it is, uh, oh, I, sorry, I've just remembered this. There is something I should, you all clear pathos. Just noticed that I didn't say that. After the fellowship phase, you clear pathos. Um, so pathos sorry. resets every fellowship phase. Pa pathos resets every fellowship. If you reach agony, mm -hmm then uh, the pathos goes through agony into fate. Fate does not reset. But from what I remember, fate is kind of like a good thing as well, isn't it? Like oh, you get some it, benefits from it. Yeah, uh, every so often, if you'll notice some of the fate boxes are highlighted, they will grant you a boon. Okay, interesting, yeah? cool. It's like corruption in urban shadows. It's a death spiral, but it goes up. Yeah. yeah. But unlike Urban Shadows, it sounds like it resets every session, so I don't have to worry about turning into a horrible NPC in <laughs> one well, session. Well, time. no, no, but Pathos does. Yeah, yeah. Fate doesn't. So you've yeah. always got some reserve in Pathos to use up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so um, each of you rolls against that. So, Airman, um, name, is your epithet valid? Um, your your resolve and spirit dice counts. Is there anything else you want to throw at this? Or oh, you are muted. I don't think uh, I don't see where my episode is, is very useful in this. But I think I hope that uh, the six and the eight will see me for, by, uh, see uh, me. Uh, I, I add the die the dice right. Uh, you add the top two dice. Yeah, well, your... I'm only rolling two then. 
cool. Okay, then I'm rolling. Let's go. Yeah, I've got an 11, so. Fine, so you prevail with an 11. I must remember to make a note of these because it matters who gets the better one. Um, carrying on, let's, what about Vikinda? How do you do at Resolve and, uh, and uh, Spirit? And does your epithet count? I do not believe my epithet counts, but uh, just to start off, because this seems like it's going to be important to refresh, I am going to mark uh, Pathos to try and have some reason in here to uh, make a sense of these stories and what Arianne would want. That works for me. You can always spend Pathos to include another domain. So I'll roll 2d6 and a d8. And that um, was needed because I got, it's the two highest die, right? Yes, it is. And then I got an eight. You're muted, Alan. So I am. What about Ethelfled? Uh, the way this works is you always roll your name dice, whatever it is. If your epithet is uh, legitimate in this context, you can roll that one. And then the chosen or defined domain dice, which in this case is resolve, resolve and spirit, you can spend pathos to include any, you know, any number of pathos to include any no number of other domain dice. Yeah, uh, I think I'll definitely mark a pathos to bring in arts and oration, uh, since we've we've had a you know we've had a story shared, and so perhaps I'm uh, you know listening closely, uh, perking up my ears to uh, to understand this story and understand you know what the uh, intended effect of the uh, of of the story is uh, on on us and on the gods. Um, so yeah, that'll that's that's two d six and a d eight. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that my um, epithet is is in, but I'm 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 happy rolling these three. Okay. Uh, that's an eight all told, or no, it is not. That's a ten all told because the dice are you know tricksy. Yeah. Um, that uh, that 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 new f new feature of your party, which just keeps you on your toes. Um, and, and that succeeds, you prevail. Round we go to Blackwin. Um, you are Blackwin? Yes. Um, I mean, the story was one about someone having to go through various trials and uh, things, right? So I'm gonna try and make the case that the silver handed uh, reflects, you know, the eyes of the gods upon Blackwin and um, their interference <laughs> within his life. Uh, I go for that. Yeah, I'll so I'll, I'll take both of those. So that'd be 3d6, I guess, at the moment. Um, and just because I want to rack up some pathos this time so that we get into those fate things at some point, I'm going to take that to uh, invoke blood and valor as well. And, uh, you know, that these the trials in Blackwind's life have all been of a bloody nature, to be honest. I always love it when you beat your chest, Blackwind. <laughs> Apparently so, yeah. Um, so that would be uh, 3d6 and a d8, all right. Uh, which gets me 11. So we have a tie. Um, uh, the highest of the ties is black win. So if, 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 the, if the total ties, then it is the maximum number you roll, which is down to Blackwin, okay. I think, with 11, 17 compared. Uh, if I'd remember the pesos roll, I would have done this rule. I would have done this just to say. Okay, I... well, 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 we'll pick that up next time round then. Um, uh, so, um, so uh, Blackwin, you prevail. Um, the best here also is one, one bond with a deity. And I'm going to define that deity as Arionrod, as that was the focus of the, uh, of the, uh, the celebration. So you have a bond with Ariandrod. Uh, not favor, a bond. Yes, bonds yeah. are more powerful. Yeah, you can do more with a bond. Um, and uh, a bond with a god is worth a d10, is my rule of thumb. Um, so, uh, so you get that. Um, nobody suffers. 
Um, so the, the celebration is well received uh, and all is well. So there's no wrath to be marked, which is all a good thing. Um, now then, um, what I want to do, I'm going to shift the order slightly because just um, for narrative. Oh. Do we receive uh, favours from the divine favours for our patron gods back? Um, oh, sorry, yes, I beg your pardon. Said... Win or lose, each hero marks two divine favours with gods or gods of their choice. So that could be with your patron god or with somebody else. So you've got two to mark. I'm sorry, well remembered. And is there glory to, uh, to, to distribute? The glory is uh, all of five glory to Blackwin, and everyone else gets three. My first glory. <laughs> Um, you see, that's what happens when Ethelred got, got promoted out of the war band that has been brought into the other world with them. Instant glory. Instant glory. Um, the next phase is one of leadership. Um, and just to be clear, the leader has final say on how you deal with the strife that you will encounter, as well as carrying the responsibility to interpret the signs of the gods. So... Um, I'm going to describe a challenge, but in order to do that, I need to have a shooting star that directs your journey. Uh, and you follow this shooting star uh, away from that heathland that we, that we, we, we entitled misery towards um, mountains, mist shrouded, storm racked mountains, which I am going to call the mountains of belief. Um, and as you make your way into the mountains, the terrain gets rougher, the terrain gets more difficult, the terrain gets steeper and more dangerous. And as you make your way through this terrain, the war band is getting jittery. Um, they, the, it, it's slippery, the scree slopes give way under their feet. Uh, the, the rocks are, are sharp as they clamber through some of the passes that you make your way through. And so I, I, I'm going to start, let me think, I started last time with speed, so this time let me start with Vikinda. Vikinda, how do you bolster the war band in, this, in these difficult circumstances? And this is an opportunity for you to, to narratively describe what you do that will then allow you to decide which domain you will roll in this bolstering effort. Yeah. Um... Vikinda is many things, but one is not a person who would ask anyone to do something she would not do. So she is going to try and lead by um, example, by taking a uh, time and you know, showing that you know, you don't have to be fast and nimble to get across these rocks. The slow and steady approach will do it, and uh, try and you know, show them a path to uh, get to safety. Okay, that sounds like craft and reason to me. Okay. So you are Vik Vikinda. How is your epithet? I am uh, my man tamer. I am a man tamer. I believe it is working because I am telling them what to do and uh, how to do it. So that's 2d6 and a d8. Do you want to spend any pathos to invoke another domain or spend any bonds to borrow a name dice from somebody else or anything else? I think I'm on the same path as Will. I will spend some uh, pathos and uh, I think uh, blood and valor as uh, the danger of uh, doing this does get me scraped up some on the uh, way there. So yeah, um, what am I trying to beat? Uh, you, are, you are trying to beat a mere five. Oh, well then. I just said I didn't need to spend that pathos. Well, I mean, if you're on the business of getting to pathos. Yeah, true. Let us... And remember, in a tie, the total matters. Okay, I got a 12. Plus, it's, uh, it's you know, it's a competition among heroes, right? It's not just about the, uh, the target number here. Indeed, indeed. Uh... Total of 12, um, uh, sorry, 12 is your top two, but what's your total together? Oh, total together would be um, uh, 19. Okay. Uh, moving along, Ethelfled, how, how do you bolster the war band in these difficult circumstances? Yeah, 
Um, I think, uh, I think, so the, the challenge is the, the perilous mountainous uh, pass here. And, and there, you know, you could read that as their morale. There's the physical and there's also the effect on them. Right. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll forge, I'll forge ahead and, um, just, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to to hearten the troops, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, run run ahead along like the uh, the most you know kind of thin and and perilous margin of the uh, uh, yes exactly yeah exactly like a little a little bit of a of a tightrope walk uh, but like with with lion hearted confidence uh, pushing ahead and you know calling calling back you know telling the uh, the war band members that there's uh, nothing to be afraid of if our if our hearts are are uh, uh, bold and our feet are daring. Um, that sounds to me like your name, your epithet, blood and valor, an arts and oration. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll mark a pathos so I can get the two uh, two domains in there. Uh, so I'm gonna grab. 2d6, 1d, or 3d6, and 1d8 for this. Right, I'm dragging them around so I can see which ones I'm doing. All right. Uh, I think they are done rolling, and now I look at the top two. 13. And a total of 19, I think. Okay. Um, moving around to Blackwin. What Blackwin are you doing? Uh, to uh, get the war band through this difficult patch? Uh, Blackwind, the epithet non-applicable, um, is leading through with, uh, you know, I think uh, just sheer athletic prowess. Uh, it might be tough going, but he's just unstoppable. So that's uh, Blood and Valor. Uh, and I will invoke Pathos to roll with um, Resolve and Spirit as well. So we're at 2d6 and a d8 um and i'm um going to invoke uh, a bond with um vakinda to use her name as well uh, is it her name or her epithet that's how you use it's her name, name. Her uh, name yeah. and and vakinda how how does how does that look in the fiction in to get access to your support for this Hmm. I was thinking of building off sort of what you described as your approach, you know, like the, because Blackwind's definitely not the fastest and the whatever, he's just, you know, it's the mountain meets the mountain, basically. Well, it could be just like, you know, following her blood trail, pretty much, that, uh, like, the name is in, like, the, you know, this violence, this, uh, this is the correct way to go, and leaving your own, mixing your, mingling your blood with hers. Yes. Cool. Okay, so, so spend the bond and get an extra D6. D6, so that's 1D6. Uh, I'm on, am I on 4D6, I think? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Black win. I spent pathos. Two, three yeah. for the borrowed name and a D8. Oh, three. Yeah, 3D6 and a D8. 3D6 and a D8, cool. Um, that is a 10. Um, and total of uh, 18. 18, yeah. Yeah. Um, and finally, Airman, how are you uh, getting the warband where it needs to be? Well, I'm a monster hunter, right? I've hunted monsters through the mountains, so I actually know the terrain. And instead of charging ahead, I will uh, figure out the best way to go for us, and I will... Uh, help the men get there, bolster their resolve, bolster their spirit. And uh, I think I will also spend a pathos to use my, uh, to use craft and reason. And I will use resolve and spirit, of course, just to get them through this. So, and I'm Iaman, the monster hunter, and we're going there. 3d6 and a d8, I think. Yeah. yeah I've also got, I've got a 12. And uh, all together, I've got a nine. No, I've got, I've got a nineteen. I've got a twenty-one. But that doesn't help because somebody had a thirteen. Ah, they did. So um, five glory to uh, the Kinder, I think, uh, 
Uh, sorry, no, I start with Vikinda. So I think that is to. Oh God, I. I uh, I'm the one who rolled a 13. Yes, you are. Sorry, I need to find a way to codify my notes. Um, so yeah, so that is uh, Ethelfled gets five glory. Everyone else gets three glory, um, and you get the warband through through. And it is Ethelfled uh, who assumes through that the respect of the warband and therefore the leadership of our uh, of our expedition into the mountains. Yeah, I bet. I think like I think the warband maybe feel like you know sure there's all these there's all these heroes that were you know taking taking the lead, but but Ethel Ethelflaed's one of us. We uh, we 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 feel a kinship with her, and she's she's stepping up to the plate. So they're they're behind me. Yeah, absolutely. One of the ordinary people has leapt to the high table. Yeah, I like that. Um, and and so what I will do then is in in a camp in a pass, uh, you. As you make camp, you can see enormous storm crowds roiling across the distant uh, mountain tops, and uh, you know the, the the mists that that enshroud the land routinely uh, are just overwhelmed by this lightning cracks and thunder in the distance. Um, and you bed down that night, and there are dreams, there are omens and portents. Uh, the gods reveal their desires through dreams. Uh, and you will find this, just for reference, there is a belief tab in the Character Keeper. So as I read it, you can, you can see it. Uh, Caridwen, goddess of magic, her sign is her cauldron. And in the dream, it is carried by pious druids to restore what is lost. Quite where they're carrying it, but they're carrying it with reverence to a place of power. Um, and then there is a dream of Tyrannis god of storms. His sign is a storm that blows up quickly and then disperses, and blows up quickly and then disperses. A storm coming and a storm going, the untamed air. And finally, Gofanon, the, uh, the god of, the ingenious god, the god of making uh, and keeping. Uh, his sign, sign is a hoard of great value. And what what that value looks like probably differs from dream to dream. But it, for each of you, it is a hoard of that which is valuable. Spoils to those who have the guile to take them. Those are the dreams. And then at dawn, you wake all through the night in the distance uh, beyond this valley. Uh, these storms have been raging. And then in the morning, they are gone absolutely gone after days of having colored your horizon and the shooting star leads you on in that direction so let me ask Ethelflaed what are you thinking of those dreams what omens and portents do you feel those dreams convey if any yeah um it so for 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 Ethelflaed the um uh, the hoard of great value uh, took the form of illuminated manuscripts because those are those are rare and valuable, and of course contain contain great knowledge. So I think I think her interpretation is uh, the gods want us to uh, to seize uh, whatever it is that is uh, that's accumulated here. Uh, that there is some some treasure some treasure that also contains you know wisdom and knowledge within it. Uh, and it needs it needs to be seized by the worthy, possibly restored to some uh, uh, restored to some place, as we saw that cauldron being brought. But we need to to stay on guard for this, you know, for the sudden storm and whatever uh, whatever unpredictable danger it represents. But that's the uh, that's the interpretation that uh, Ethel Flood has of the dream, and I'm sure she'll she'll share it with uh, with members of the war band around the uh, around the campfire in the morning. Um, and so it is with that in mind that you head off in the direction the shooting stars have set, sent you. Um, and as you make your way through the mists of this valley into a higher saddle of land, uh, surrounded by razor sharp peaks, um, you will see a settlement uh, on, on this, almost on the side of this steep valley. Um, 
and, and you will see all is in turmoil. Uh, people rush to and fro as you as you approach the settlement. Um, you will see them crying and, and panicked and, and flying away into the high peaks. You see uh, a number of winged worms, small dragons. Um, and, and the cry goes up, it's gone, it's gone. Uh, the brigand queen has stolen the cauldron of storms. We are defenseless. Um, the worms will slay us all if they return, is the general sense. The two leaders of the settlement recognize you as great heroes and approach you and each entreats you to hear their words. Um, I am Kalanos the Druid. And, and uh, I know that without the blessing of Kiridwen, we are doomed. The sacred cauldron must be restored and, and, and the stone circle built around its sacred grove uh, should be decorated to show the greatest piety and supplication to the gods. And the other leader of the settlement, uh, a woman called Melodrix, addresses you and says, I am of the Carver's Guild. Uh, we, we, we carve the most beauteous things of great value. And, and we should not be relying on the gods. We should be selling what we carve. We should be selling what, what our carvings convey. Uh, with, with what we sell, we can protect ourselves from the worms. We do not need to rely on the gods entire. And they turn towards you. They turn towards you all and to Ethelfled in particular. And each of them looks at you as if to say, what should we do? So a cauldron's been stolen? Yep. Yeah, that that needs to be put right first. You know, whatever whatever economic decisions this uh this settlement ends up making for itself, uh we need to we need to set right that wrong. So I I will um uh uh I will you know say to my to my fellow heroes and our war band, take down as many worms as we can with the uh, with them with them brought down perhaps we can we can recover this this cauldron they have stolen so just so i'm clear uh, the, the, this you're tending towards the druid's view about restoring the cauldron but your first priority is to protect these people against the worms yeah absolutely and and you know i figure if we can if we can slay one of them uh, uh or 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 like you know break one of their wings uh maybe we can interrogate it and find out what the where the cauldron has gone okay so um this i, I is is this defending the settlement going to be down to you alone or is this about organizing the settlement how do you see that happening ethelfled because that will help mm. me define the domain absolutely um yeah i see it as kind of uh rallying and leading this uh this you know band of warriors we've we've brought here to all you know aim their aim their their spears and slings and ranged weapons to try and uh uh, uh try and bring down bring down the bring down worms uh in uh you know in in a way that's hopefully helpful for these uh these people we've just stumbled across so while ethelfled is raising the militia and organizing them um how blackwin uh do we what do we see blackwin doing uh, towards this aim. I'm in the battlements and limbering his shield and his axe and testing. If only it. there was a battlement. Oh, okay. There's no battle. More than standing. Uh... <sighs> Climbing onto the roof of a building, the building nearest the edge of the settlement, uh, hauling himself up and then sharpening that, opening his palm, sharpening the axe upon his palm of his silver hand and then readying it. Okay. Airman, uh, that it, it sounds like I've got arts and oration in my mind for Ethelfled. I've got blood and valor in my mind for, for Blackwind. Airman, how are you uh, contributing to this objective? Well, I'm asking these people of the village if they know where the worms have their lair, and how many uh, there are. And I mean, if we can take the fight to them, then we probably find the cauldron there anyway. 
Um, that is probably then, I'm thinking, uh, I think that's resolve and spirit, isn't it? It's trying to, um, to work out, or is it, oh, hang on, I've just done something terrible. Is it, is this about the tactics and what they know, or is it about stiffening their sinews in the immediate, in the face of the immediate threat? Is there an immediate threat? Well, they, those, those, those worms are circling those high peaks above. And certainly Ethelfled's view is that they're about to come back. Okay. So I would like to figure out if they are coming back before stiffening anybody's resolve, because it seems like, um, no, it's probably not resolve and spirit. It's probably uh, craft and reason here, what I'm using, because I really need to figure out what's going on. And if I have to stiffen some backs for them to tell me the truth instead of panicking then i will do that but let me cut to the chase as you are considering this you see these worms peel off and begin to dive down at the valley let's oh. simplify it oh yes okay there is now so, a threat there is no threat then i will uh try to motivate these people to go where they need to go those warriors to warrior against the worms and the non-warriors to take cover okay so this is about stiffening resolve yeah. uh, vikinda what do we see you doing? I uh, believe Vikinda was trying to uh, gather what information she could on these creatures from those who have uh, dealt with them all these years. You know, like, is there a certain, is there like any weakness? Like, you know, do you hit, like, do you go for the underbelly? Do you go for the wings? Do, like, how, where's, like, do you hit them on the snout? How do you best defeat these things? Um, I think what they will tell you is if they're in the air, they are more dangerous. Mm. As long as they're in the air, they are more dangerous, uh, is what they will tell you. But that gives me a flavour of which domain we're looking at. Okay, let's go around then to Ethelfled. So uh, this is about organising people using arts and oration. Um, and uh, I will just read out what I know about the worms. Um, they, are, um, they are worms. They are worth a D10. Um, I can tell you that they are razor clawed. Uh, which is a d8 okay. um, and this is perilous you have oh. to suffer harm simply to engage them at all yeah and i can suffer harm by marking pathos or Indeed. by or by marking a bond as someone intervenes and blocks the harm exactly so um they are uh they are hate filled they hate this place which is worth another d8 and you have to mark divine favor if you suffer in a contest with them. Interesting. Yeah? So beware okay. of that. Um, if you suffer, not to get in. Yeah. Um, Skyborn. The worms are epic in any contest against them where they can freely strike from the air. So that is where we will start in this first assault. Yeah. So that's okay, so why you're going to have to pay the harm to even enter the contest. They've got they've got a bunch of uh, a, a bunch going on. They yeah. have, they have. So let me. But the bottom line is a D10 and two D8s is 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 what I'm what I'm starting with here. Um, so let's re-roll those. Um, oh, that's not so bad. That's eight plus five. So the challenge here is thirteen. Okay. Yeah. So with that in mind, Ethel fled. What do you do? I Ethel fled lion hearted will engage in a contest of arts and narration. I will mark pathos to bring in blood and valor as I, you know, unholster my trusty sling and try to put some, you know, put some holes through the, you know, the stretched leather wings of these worms in hopes of, uh, hopes of bringing them down. And um, I will call upon the precision of uh, uh, Arian, Arian Hod, uh to, uh, to aid me with this. Um, Go for it. So I've got, yeah, name, epithet, two domains, including my D8 domain, and divine favor. So, so that's, that's 3D6, be... a D8, and a D4. Yeah. No! <laughs> it was looking all right. And then roll for your party did its thing. Um, uh, my, an eight is is the best I've got here. Wow. Well, you got a 13 with the four. Uh, uh, nine, no, I'm, nine, oh, no, nine, I'm counting. 11, I'm, 13. wait, 
So, uh, so the way this works is that the D4 is added to the best two you roll. Yeah. So the best two there is a six. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's very sad when the d4 is like higher than any other dice it is. hanging but, out but, here. But it's not quite as bad as you because it's you you got two two three so that's a six and you add the four so that gets to ten. Yes. So I, it could be worse. I'm still going to suffer here though. You are going to suffer, I fear. Um, so uh, so that cost you your one of your precisions with Ariane Rod, um, and because they are. Uh, they are going to, they are sacred. Um, you are going to suffer another loss of divine favor. So which divine favor do you, do you are you going to lose um, as part of this, the harm? I'm going to lose a, a favor from uh, Bridget because uh, it's, it's not necessarily very wise, my approach. Fine. And you will mark pathos uh, because you suffer harm if you engage and fail. Yeah, if you suffer. Um, uh, let's move along round to Blackwind. Blackwind, there you are as this worm is screeching down towards you. Let's see how it goes. Cool. Uh, well, Blackwind, the silver-handed, uh, is obviously using Blood and Valor. Um, and will mark uh, Pathos to mark Craft and Reason because he is using a, uh, he's tactically planning on, uh, you know, timing this just right to grab hold of it with his silver hand and snatch it out of the air. Uh, <laughs> And so that would be a mark pathos. I'm on uh, 3d6 plus d8. So I've got to be a 13. Um, how do uh, the Mor Morrigan's Raven Feather Cloak uh, offers you d10? d10. Yeah. Um, oh, I should have used my advantage die forward because I feel like Raven Slayer. It could apply to this. I'll keep that in mind for next time. Okay. I'm sure this won't be the last you've seen of the worms. Yes. One of the wishes uh, from last week was monsters. <laughs> but um, it feels like the D4 is the most important thing here because I got to beat that 13 or take more pathos, right? And the D4 is the way, it's best way of getting a flat extra rather than a cool. I, I'm still wrapping my head around the whole dice pool thing, um, you know? Because it feels like you can roll a lot of dice, but because you only take the top two. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I think that might be uh, the Morrigan uh, cunning, because I think it's like a feint that like lures this worm into, um, you know, being within grabbing range, effectively. But, but you're leaving her cloak out of this at this point. Uh, yeah, because it doesn't feel like the dice, the, the value is high enough to risk that okay. thing. It's just more about getting that flat extra value okay. to bump it up. So 3d6, uh, a d8, and a d4. Yeah. Um, oof, not good. Uh, that is only 11. Um, I'm seeing a one, a six, a three, a one, and a four on the. Uh, I it... rolled, I rolled the uh, the d4 to the left rather than the d4 underneath. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, so that is nine, ten, eleven. Oh dear, yeah, not going well. Okay. Um, well, you will mark divine favor because you are struck from above uh, mm -hmm. by these uh, by these creatures, um, and you also suffer pathos simply to get in the game. Yeah. So is and that just one pathos? That's one pathos to get in the game, but because you suffered, you also mark another. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, let's go around to Airman. Airman, monster, monster hunter. Might that epithet apply? I think so. It, okay. Uh, yes. Um, what I'll do, I have a bow. These things are in the air. Seems reasonable to use um, the bow. And I think I will stand tall on some roof or something just to let people see that I'm there, right? Be because I, I don't want them to break. Because it doesn't, it's, it's not going that well for us. I will spend a pesos to invoke blood and valor. I will roll with resolve and spirit as well. I am Iamon the monster hunter. And I think I will invoke precision by Ariane Rod just to guide my arrows. Fine. So that's the standard 3d6, d8, and a d4. Okay, I'll use these that are grouped together. Or maybe I use another. Oh, no, I'll use these. Come on, they have to roll out sometime. But they don't. No, nope, they don't. These are bad dice. I've rolled it. It's a 12, but no, it's it's an 11. That's not enough, right? We have a 13 to beat. 
indeed so you need to oh, spend what? you needed to spend pathos to get into the game mm -hmm. uh, and you also suffer pathos because you you suffered um and you also need to mark another divine favor uh because they are so unpleasant yeah um, because they're so ugly i am losing fa uh, favor with branwen but this is there's no beauty here ah uh, that's very true good 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 ploy uh what about the kinder what do we see well, it seems the problem that most of these people have had is try to uh, engage them in the air. I think I want to drag them down to the ground by presenting a very vulnerable target. Oh. And um, just be a um, be that kind of princess these worms want to kidnap. Okay. But, and uh, I do not think Man Tamer is going to apply here, but I think my name will. I Always. think this is... Uh, reason as tactical yep i will spend a uh, pathos for uh, blood and valor and i think i will um uh call on um black wind to uh defend me an important this. question in the chat is can we spend multiple divine favors um, like if you're like I want yeah. to bring in several of these. Let me roll a handful of d4s. My my reading of the rules is you're not supposed to, but I think that's a bit naff. So uh, what we what the we house ruled it in session one. You can spend as many defined favors as you like. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm going to call on Eamon to protect me to protect that uh, pathos I may lose. Fine. Sure. And. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to use a Bronwyn's beauty to be a very delicate target. <laughs> yes, an appetizing. You, they simply can't resist you, surely. And and I think if this succeeds, they will be on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So let me uh, roll these die. that nope that is a nine these dice hate us um uh now you you spent a bond with airman how does airman protect vikinda from actually taking all that harm we've been talking about you still have to pay a pathos to get in the game but you won't suffer the divine favor or harm uh from the failure so airman how do you how do we see airman protecting vikinda Ah, oh, I mean, I've still got this bow, and even though I'm not bringing these things down, I think they will be a bit respectful of the arrows that I'm shooting, so that there is only one of them who's going towards Vikinda, and uh, not all, because she's such a tempting target, isn't she? Uh, she is. Uh, she's irresistible, clearly. Um, so, and and after that kind of sweep through, they disappear up into the sky, the high peaks again. Uh, giving you an opportunity to uh, consider your next steps. So, Ethelflaed, how do you how do you organize your group to decide what to do now? Yeah, I think I think she like dusts herself off after like you know her you know her kind of back and forth involved you know slinging slinging rocks at these worms and then like one of them like sweeps its tail and like knocks her off her feet or something right because she's 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 suffered pathos along the way so she's <sighs> very well we have suffered a setback but we must not be daunted we must gather our strength and gather our wits and discern the way forward and so she will she will just be you know you know, pep talking herself a little, uh, but you know, uh, then like trying to trying to gather others others in and um and see if uh, the full um uh, see see if the company can regroup after this you know slightly ignominious defeat. Well, Kalanos the druid will throw himself on the ground in front of you. Say, you see, you see, you cannot prevail without the gods. Uh, while Melodrix is saying. We need to buy protection. We need we need the resources to buy a fighting force. You alone are not enough. Vikinda, what are you making of uh, of of these arguments between the druid and the carver? 
Oh, this is uh, inter I think she will go up to uh, the druid and the carver stand like in the middle of them and uh, you if you wish if you believe the gods uh, are needed for favor tell us what we need to do to get their favor you return, return the cauldron the brigand queen stole the cauldron. Bring us back the cauldron. The storms will return. The worms will be driven off. I'm elderly what? saying, no, that's, that's stupid. It's just a temporary solution. What, the what's the connection between the brigand queen and the worms? I, and I think Melodrix will turn to you and say that the, the, the brigand queen stole the cauldron. And this fool believes that the worms have, we've been protected from the worms by the storms the cauldron brews. But that's just a temporary respite. We need a long-term solution. Yeah, but a temporary respite is when you can come up with a long-term solution. It's better to figure out a way to deal how to deal with these worms when they aren't attacking you left and right. So are we drifting towards convincing Melodrix to go along with the druid? I mean, do we do we need to convince her? Like, like what 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 does she bring? She's the she leads the people who make the the carvings. Yeah, she and the she, idea is she is the the, the temporal leader, if you mm. will, of the settlement. Got it. So the idea is, if if she and her people aren't on board, they could cause cause problems for whatever whatever tactic we're taking. A, a bond with her and her and and her temporal power would be no bad thing to get out of this. I guess mm. you could ignore yeah. that and just. You know, but that's that's my mechanical advantage of bringing her on side. Yeah. What do you do? Ethel Fled, you've heard some of the suggestions from Vikinder and Eamon. Yeah. Um, sorry, what what are the the NPCs' names one more time? The, the druid is uh, Kalanos and the carver is Melodrix. Yeah, I think I'll pull Melodrix aside, right? Like, you know, people have been people have been arguing with her, but I want to I want a chance to like, you know, speak more more privately, as I say. It seems <laughs> it seems you are a a a practical woman, uh, a a person of of craft and reason and ingenuity. Uh, Perhaps, perhaps you're right about the the changes that uh, that your people need in order to have long term prosperity, but don't you don't you agree that uh, uh, that we you know uh, that this we in this war band arriving at, at just this moment represent an opportunity to to gain breathing room if we can if we can help as the druid is asking, uh, and give you, give you just that, just that space. Uh, perhaps then, perhaps then you will have a chance to make these, uh, make these changes you seek. But if the worms destroy your whole settlement, uh, you won't be selling carvings to anyone. Um, and she listens carefully to what sounds like an arts and oration appeal to her. Yeah. Um, uh, she is, and I quote, chief D six. Stubborn, D8. Uh, Strong-armed, but I don't think that applies in this circumstance. So I'm going to roll those two. Oh, gosh. Oh, that went from a 12 to a 7. Plus the strife of 5 is a target of 12, Ethel fled to convince Great. her. I'm so, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so pumped after the last time I was rolling dice to be <laughs> rolling dice again. Um, let me ask. I have, I have five pathos marked. Yep. What happens if I mark additional pathos? Okay, so once agony, the next one down is agony. Once agony is marked, agony is yes. always marked. Yeah? Um, and the overflow in all the rest of our time together, today and next time, if you fill up pathos, you will then begin to mark fate. Yeah? Fate does not refresh. So you have whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve fate. Yeah. Uh, when you fill twelve fate, the gods have decided that your fate is sealed. Yeah. So that's kind of a campaign length, like character retirement track. Yeah. Yeah. Retirement's a very, very nice word to use. <laughs> um, uh, but the advantage of getting into the fate 
is that there are three highlighted spots on the faith track mm -hmm. which grant you a boon. And then, and does 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 agony itself cause cause something for me? Or no, or... agony is just the po the tipping point. Once you mark agony, it stays marked because that tells us across sessions. Ah, yes, now we're make, marking fate. Yeah. Okay, so even so, even when pathos resets, agony stays stays agony marked. Agony is and... you are always in agony. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a sh it's a short run. Exactly, exactly. You know, I mean, uh, there are some boons to be had. Drive them like stolen cars. Yeah, so I'll, I will I will mark agony uh, and and bring in my craft and reason to, to like, to say like, let me, let me see, you know, this, this carving that uh, that undergirds your your people, let me see. And so so I'd like to like, uh, look at look over the, the carving and like offer some, you know, informed and knowledgeable compliments on it. Um, and, and I think I can tell you that it is, it, is, it is imbued with meaning. There is learning in these carvings. Mm. Um, but I, I think for now, we've got uh, an arts and oration challenge against 12. Uh, I think that you are ethel fled. I think arts and oration, you've spent to bring in craft and reason. Yeah. So I think you're at 2d6 plus 2d8, unless you think your epithet is... Lion-hearted. I. I mean, you know what? I'll. 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 I'll lean on it a little. Uh, I'll. I'll. Uh, you know, say. You know, <laughs> you are. You. You are. Uh, uh, courageous as a uh, a great and kingly beast to uh, to stand out uh, against uh, against the. Uh, the druids, you know, superstitious insistence, but uh, even. Even the the leaders of beasts must, uh, you know, uh, must act with stealth and guile uh, when when the occasion is needed for their pride to uh, uh, to survive. That, that's good enough for me to get a three D, a, a third D six in there. Cool. And let me, uh, you know, just to just just to add a little bit uh, of uh, you know a little bit of a boost. I'm going to say I'm going to uh, mark divine favor with Gwydion. That's knowledge uh, to say that you know my kind of uh, to have a little a little addition to my my uh, my knowledge ability about there about her her work right with the hopes that that creates goodwill by having having some real some real knowledge of and appreciation for the carving that she's done. So I think that's three d six, a d eight, and a d four. Uh, I think two D eight. Where did the second D eight come from? Uh, oh no, never mind. I guess I guess there's just the one D eight. I was confused. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you do have your great deed as Raven Slayer. It's worth D ten. Mm, I'll save that one. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's quite right for the here. So okay. So let's let's see what happens. Uh okay, that was bad for a minute, but it got better. Oh, but not quite good. In Wait, what was that? What was our? What was my goal? twelve? And I tie it or exceed. I tie Whoops. it. So you succeed. You prevail. You earn twelve glory. Hey. Um and uh and and all is well with the world. Melodrix sees your argument, um and will cooperate with any efforts to restore the uh the uh the the cauldron so you can have a bond with uh the people of belief melodrix slash the people yep. of belief fantastic yeah yes yeah ethel flood ethel Flood feels a little a little bolstered she feels like you know she 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 uh did not succeed as she had hoped against the worms but but here using arts and narration and and forming a connection with the people uh, uh, she, uh, she feels, you know, she's, uh, on firmer footing. Okay. And the war band, one of ours is doing really well. So, um, I'm going to suggest we take our break here. Um, is eight minutes long enough back by half past the hour? Could, could we do just a few more minutes? Fine. Should we make it 25 to the hour? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's just easier for me to work in fives. I'll see yeah, you at 25 great. to the hour. Yeah. See you then. I'll pause the recording. 
okay we're back after our break and uh, the way i think this is panning out is that Melodrix, the head of the carvers the the temporal chief um has has agreed not to obstruct any efforts to uh to regain the cauldron um and i suppose that boils down to you pursuing the bandit queen unless you have another option up your sleeves Eamon, you're a you're a hunter of sorts what's your view i mean uh, my view is that i still want more details about what these things uh, the worms are where they what they what's their connection to this bandit queen brigand queen sorry and where's the brigand queen at and does she does she have a band oh she does have a band uh she she's well known hereabouts as uh, as a brigand uh, she has a band they lair somewhere in the mountains nobody knows where but they can point at the sky caves where the worms lair um but to be honest local knowledge about these worms is is mostly legend because they've been protected by the storms from the cauldron for generations so it's not exactly a short-term solution if they've been protected for generations uh, the, the the cauldron has protected them absolutely ah well so okay so we don't know where the bandit queen is to summarize this you'd have to track her down oh, oh we can yeah, we can, I can track her, I think. I've been good at tracking. Seems like the Bandit Queen isn't the queen of these worms. Doesn't seem so, no. Worms are incidental. Bandits may be easier foes than beasts. One can well, only hope. Well, if they're men or people like us, I don't know. But we'll find out. Men die. Yeah, you're right. We don't it's even been know known to happen. Worms die. Huh? Now, um, tracking, uh, tracking her down is craft and reason, uh, because it is about intellect, spotting the signs, all that kind of stuff. So, so that is the the uh, the challenge you're going to face. Um, I can tell you uh, before you decide whether you want to be in this or not. Uh, she is a brigand queen, and she knows these mountains well, so that's a D8. Um, she is swift shooting, but I don't think that applies to tracking her down. But I think the D6 of cunning does apply. Um, and the other thing, Kalanos will, will confide in you that he has a fear that the longer she's been in possession of the cauldron, the greater the chance that she will in some way have mastered its powers. Oh yeah, then we should start out now. Um, so I've been keeping track of the contests that have mm. elapsed. Mm. So I know what it's worth, but in, in tracking her down, it's worth nothing. So I'm rolling a D6 and a D8 and adding five. Uh, oh, that's a, oh, oh, 15. I was hoping wow. for a big one there because I you need to start notching up some glory. So the target is 19. Wow. Okay. Who is, who, is, who is going to be going to be tracking the? Oh, uh, all of you will track. Okay. All of you will will have a chance at this, um, and the the one who prevails most successfully will tell me the circumstances in which you track or don't track, or maybe you're surprised by her. I don't know. So I might uh, choose to. I might choose to provide support. Uh, uh, fine. It's yeah. always an option uh, to burn a bond with someone in order to borrow their name um, and then not take part in the contest. Uh, those are separate. I, you can burn a bond or you can decide just to stand back and support. Right, right. Because because someone can someone can burn a bond to get bolstered with your name, but but I, the hero player can also choose not to roll in the contest Absolutely. and instead provide support. Absolutely. So this is a contest of craft and reason with, with um, a mere uh 19 as the target wait 19 no sorry i no i wrote down 19 before it changed 15 as the target 15 is hard enough 15 is the target so um i think i will start with our most expert tracker then no i'll come to our expert last uh let me let me start with um blackwin so this is craft and reason do you take part and if you do 
What do we see? What do we um, do? I just want to confirm, if I fail at this, there's no pathos to be marked, right? No. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I, I think Blackwind, D6, Craft and Reason, D6. Um, I will mark pathos because I want to get some boons uh, to bring in... Um, I don't think I can really bring in Blood and Valor into it, to be honest. Uh, so I won't bring I mean, in... Remember that this is a tale told by bards a generation hence. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? It'll be Blood and Valor in the sense of like, I, you know, Blackwind stormed forward and blazed a path through the hills to the Bandit Queen. His uh, hands bled on the rocks as he ran across them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that is a... D six, three D six so far, um, and I will burn a. Uh, I think, um, the Morrigan's uh, Raven Feather Cloak. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, why not? Um, let's put that into the table. The D ten. I'll roll a ten, and it'll be perfect. <laughs> uh, and. You know what? Just because I want to I want us to start winning one, I will also uh, spend. Um, I think uh, Fortitude, perhaps, uh, the Nodens one. Uh, again, that sort of uh, tenacity. Uh, yeah. So that's a D4 as well. And okay, I have 3D6, a D10, and a D4. Okay. Uh, do you know that there's a D8 over there, not a D10? Yes, I rolled a D10 on the, um, the oh, left the, hand side. Okay. Yeah, in the middle. Uh, so that is an. Oh, I've won. I've done it. I've got a 12. No, I haven't. <laughs> I've got a 12 or 14. Um, I'm about to, to invent a house rule. If you tie, you will both get whatever benefit the tie got you. I'm not going to be worried about adding and keeping records of what the totals are. I yeah. really can't be asked. Um, so Blackwin, so close. Um, there is a fall and the raven feathered cloak billows out behind you. But alas, you land belly down, not back down. So it provides no protection. Um, Airman, what do we see as you engage with craft and reason to find the trail of the bandit queen? Well, considering that I'm Airman the monster hunter, I feel that my epithet might uh, yeah. kind of play into this. Yeah. I will also spend pesos, of course, to call in resolve and spirit because this is a this is a hard way and we've been marching and uh, that this just uh we just can't afford to lose hope I, I, and i would like to remind you that resolve and spirit also gives you some command of the spirits of the other world remember uh, oh right so uh, in no. your narrative don't feel you always have to resort back to resolve yeah, but I, I think it, in, in this case, it means craft and reason and this resolve to be patient about this okay. instead of rushing into everything. So I think, and I also will, I think I will also call in um, the divine favor of Morrigan for the cunning part because, I mean, so I've got okay. a D10 and I've got 3D6 and I've got a D4. You have. Okay, I'm moving these because I feel that this mm -hmm. is an important idea and I want this one. So, okay, no, not this one, this one. Okay, let's reroll these and let's see where they go. Yes, I've rolled a 14 plus two is 16. Winning, win, winner, winner, chicken dinner, as a friend of mine would oh, say. Wow. Tra tracking, I know how to track. Um, moving along, uh, Vikinda, what do we see, how do we see you engaging with the pursuit of uh, the Bandit Queen? I believe Vikinda is um, learning, like, these people don't know much about worms. They probably know a, mu a lot about brigands who would come under the storm. So I think she's like, you know, like, oh, did you ever, I, you know, have you ever drunk with them? If so, like, where did they, uh, like, what direction did they head off in? Uh, with that done, and, like, I think after that, I will tap in uh, Pathos to talk to uh, the spirits of the, sl the uh, those that were slain by the brigands to help us on our path to them, because they would, of course, want revenge. Okay, yeah, so, so intrigue to milk the population for a direction of travel, 
and then the spirits of the mountains for what or whatever the spirits in the mountains. Okay, so I think I'm seeing. Does Man Tamer apply here? I do not believe so. I think it will be uh, the Kenda uh, with uh, craft and reason and resolve and spirit. And I, Ethel Fled Lionhearted, will support the Kinda, uh, you know, backing you up however however I can. So I'm going to not roll for this contest, but I will uh, give you my domain die. So one more, it's one more d6 for you to, to add into the pool. Okay. I think what's, what's not to like? And I will call in the cunning of the Morrigan. The Morrigan gets a lot of work. <laughs> yep, so that is a uh, d10, 3d6, and a d4. So I'm rolling all the ones on the bottom. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Dang! Ah, such suffering is being spread about today, um, and and therefore Ethelfled has opted to support Bikinda rather than than take part. Um, so everybody gets uh, one glory, but when you do catch her, you will be at a disadvantage. She finds you. Ah, oh, excuse uh, me, I, I had a oh, success. Oh, you did, I beg your pardon, sorry. 15 glory to Airman, uh, and one to everyone else. Um, I've got to find a better way of doing this. <laughs> um, uh, so, Airman, describe the circumstances in which you find the bandit queen. Okay, so we've been on this for a bit. Um, and it wasn't that easy to find her because she is cunning. Um, but I think she has a band of people who are not quite as cunning as she is. And some of them, they left traces, like somebody uh, ripped off some berries of a bush and another left some scuff marks uh, at, at, at a brook that we had to cross. So it's been, it's been a thing really to, to track this, but uh, as a monster hunter, you know how to do stuff like that. So uh, I think that where it was, in, not with Kinda, sorry, the Brigand Queen is hiding out is a small, pretty much secluded valley with a, with, a, with a lake, with a little lake where they can maybe fish if they feel so inclined, which they probably usually, usually don't. They have built some sturdy but not very artful huts um, and they have started to build a barricade but it's not quite finished yet. Okay so we have a valley, a lake uh, and an unfinished barricade around this fairly crude settlement which as, as all the valleys in these mountains they are all overlooked by the sky caves of the worms uh, just for reference. Um, uh, and so I think I think I'm probably going to set us up for our battle. Um, uh, I think I'm going because I'm keen to leave enough time to do the proper end of session at the end of the session. So um, there is Sarah and her camp. Um, I think you will see that they are gathered round the center of the of this little crude settlement. Um, uh, and they probably have camp followers, uh, you know, wives and children, whatever with them. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a functional little settlement. And you can see that in the middle of uh, an open space in the middle, on the ground is what looks like a large pot. And you can see a woman laying her hands on the pot. And as you watch, uh, a slight kind of whirl of the in the mists begin to form. Uh, it looks like Sarah has gained at least some control over the cauldron of storms. So, uh, let me just get my, because uh, this, this is the bit that I am most concerned that I got get right. So, uh, I established the circumstances of the battle and any details that might be used for advantage. So I think that uh, in this battle, you are, Sarah counts for her, her band as well. So she is the leader of these brigands. Uh, she is swift shooting, D8 perilous, suffer harm if you suffer in a contest, in a contest with her or her men, or her band. She is cunning. Um, and she is currently, she has a D10 control of the cauldron of storms. 
So I'm going to roll 2d8, a d6, and a d10. Uh, Go question. On. The fact that she is surprised, does that counteract maybe the cunning, at least? Um, okay, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, go for it. Um, oh, that's quite a good one. That is an eight and a six for 14, yeah. plus the stroke of five is a 19. Uh, not that we have anything to lose here. Each hero chooses their domain for the clash. So um, who is going, Who? Uh, tell me how you prepare for this assault on the Brigand Queen, if that's the objective. Or do you have another approach in mind? Let me look at Ethelfled. You are leading the warband and our heroes. Is this about stealing it? Is this about taking it? Is it about beating them into the dust? You know, I think, I think like if we have this chance to, to observe them uh, before, uh, before engaging, I want to take advantage to try and, to try and strike some fear into this group, perhaps even, you know, uh, confuse and, uh, uh, and, and scatter some of them by, you know, by first, um, I, I'm, I'm bringing in my Raven Slayer great deed for this, actually. I think the, the first thing I do is I spot like some, some, some ravens up in, in the sky and just start, just start like sniping them with my sling to like drop birds of ill omen right like onto the cauldron and onto the, uh, the people around it to try and, uh, to try and you know, break, the, break the resolve of the, uh, of the brigands, make them think there's a curse coming down on them. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so then, so this is a context among you to see who is most effective and you'll get to set some of the, some of the terms later on. Okay. So I've just got that 19 on the shelf ready for when you actually confront her. So in this prep preparation, uh, describe then in terms of the game, you are um, Ethel Fled. I am Ethel Fled, lion hearted. Uh, as I attempt to to overawe my uh, my enemies, um, I am using, uh, I guess, craft and reason here to be uh, uh, to to be uh, you know uh, bring in this trickery, right? Yeah. And um, uh, you know what? And I will I will mark a pathos to bring resolve and spirit in as well because uh, there's. Um, you know, there's a, a, I'm essentially trying to play on play on superstition, and uh, and that marks the first of the highlighted fate tracks. That's so true. Pick a uh, boom. Uh, I think I'm going to advance my resolve and spirit dice up to a d8. Uh, okay. So uh, so I'm rolling rolling a rolling three d6 and a d8 plus whatever I get from the rape from my Raven Slayer. Uh, I, that, that's a, that's I, I think that's a d8 advantage under normal circumstances. And I think they are appropriate circumstances here. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. The D8s are these ones with the triangular faces, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, and uh, yeah, have we got enough of them? Uh, no, I, I, I yes, yes, we do, I think, because I'm rolling. Yeah, I'm going to roll. Uh, oh, I guess in this case, I'm actually just rolling. Yeah, 3D6, 2D8. I'll go ahead and do this. Whoa. Uh, well, that that ended up as a 15. Okay. So in seeking advantage, Ethel fled as success. It looks like she's working hard at terrifying them. Let us move around to Blackwin. Blackwin, what do you do to try to win advantage in this coming attack or contest battle? Um. And this is like a prep move, right? Rather than yep. a, uh, the battle itself. Uh, and the, the winner is... here will get a D10 advantage to play at some point. Uh huh. Um, I'm just going to support um, Aemon, I think, mm -hmm. in this case. Okay. So you will lend Aemon your uh, a domain dice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Which ones? Uh, I mean, I presume the biggest one, but yeah, uh, <laughs> feel free whichever one. I would go for the biggest one, blood and yeah, valor. I would, I would go for blood and valor as well. Yeah. Valor as well. So and... let's go to Eamon to describe what you do that will narratively 
enable that blood and valor? I will go and position our warband, help our warband position itself while uh, Ethelflaed is shooting at ravens. I will tell the people where, where to stand, where to go, that this is it, that we have to attack now, and that sh they should remember that they are chosen by the gods to... Uh, okay, that sounds like craft and reason. Yeah, tactics. and I'll... Yeah, tactics, exactly. And I'll uh, push in resolve and spirit because that's always useful. And I'll take the blood and valor die from uh, that one. Yep. Okay, so I have, let me guess, I am Yeman. I'm using craft and reason and resolve and spirit and black one is helping me with his blood and valor. Um, monster hunter that might tie in, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, because I mean, Come on. So I've got 1d2, 6, 2d6, 3d6, 1d8, 1d10. Okay, I guess that should be enough. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> yeah, well. 15 to beat in terms of uh, getting the advantage. Oh, I haven't beaten the 15, but I've got an 11, so okay. it's not too bad. Um, and then we move lastly to Vikinda. Vikinda, what do we see you to uh, in preparation for this? I believe Vikinda is um, looking at all the uh, brigands, trying to decide, like deciphering uh, how well off they are just with this storm chalice, or how well off they could be if she practiced this storm chalice at the village and learned how to strike down these worms and maybe gain some glory for her damn self instead of just being a brigand queen and how to. You know, best get best get aside that you know. Put aside your differences. Have a have a fort, a dominion, a place to call home, and then brigand from. But I, I want to uh, lure them back to the village with promises of um, support. Well, that certainly sounds like art and or oration. Um, are, are you building anything else in there? I believe that is going to be Vicinda, my. Uh, man tamer and I'm going to spend, I can spend more than one pathos, right? Yep. Then I will spend um, two pathos, one for um, craft and reason. And mm, no, I think I'll just spend the, uh, uh, one for uh, craft and reason. And I think I'll spend my uh, daring from Sir Nunos, as this is not the easiest of plans. So what I'm seeing is Vikinda coming out in front of the warband as Airman and Blackwin uh, organize it um, and challenging them to, as you've described it. So I think Vikinda Man Tamer applies. I think Art Narration, a 3d6, d10 for craft and reason, and a d4. Okay, so let's see. There's my D10, 3D6, and a D4. Dude. What could go wrong? Everything. Like it did. I got a six. No, wait, it changed. So that is a nine, a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Still not enough. So it is Ethelflaed. Uh, who has uh, succeeded in this and gets a d10 advantage die uh, to be played. It looks like the falling ravens have freaked them more than the organized war band or the plea to return home and be happy. Um, so uh, now I will describe the threats. Um, there are two threats here. One threat is that some of the worms emerge from the sky caves and swoop down upon your warband. The other threat is that as they swoop down to devour your warband, some of them break off and head back towards the settlement to ravage the settlement in your absence. So you have two worm related threats. Yeah. And what each of you needs to decide now is whether you will uh, combat the threats or whether you will seek to seize the initiative in the oncoming confrontation with the, brand, the brigand queen. If you choose to seize the initiative and you prevail most successfully, you will tell us 
what the domain is and uh, and presumably one that you you are comfortable with and you will get to describe the fate of the queen and her brigands yeah um, if you choose to defend then you may be able to stop the carnage among your warband or stop the carnage at the village who wishes to seize control of the battle and who wishes to defend against these threats let me start with our leader ethelfled yeah i just i think i think after uh after my kind of you know, ignominious uh, 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 failure back in the village the first time, and then my my co good conversation with Melodrix. I feel like my only choice here is to try and defend the village. So possibly even, um, yeah, I've got I've, I've got an idea here. I'm going to try and stop. You know, the the worm headed back to the village. I'm I'm going to try to uh, to corral. Okay, so uh, so uh, just let me let's sort out the difficulty of the worm. So D10. They are razor clawed, so you will suffer harm in a contest where you suffer. So that's a D8. Um, they are hate filled. We know about that already. That's another D8. Uh, you will mark divine favor if you suffer in a context, context, context in a contest with them. I am going to have them land because I just think they're so unpleasant. Um, and oh my goodness me, that oh, that is a difficulty of fifteen. So the worms to defend against either band of worms is 15. Confronting the bandit queen is the 19 that I kept on the shelf from here earlier. So uh, Ethelfled chooses to confront the worms heading for the village. Uh, let me come around to Blackwin. Will you seek to seize control of the battle or will you defend the war band or double up on the worms attacking the village? Um. I I'm gonna go for uh, the queen simply because um, I feel like I'm never gonna get a better time to use that breaker of the storm rider than someone who's got a cauldron of storms. <laughs> that would I see the logic. I see the lo logic. Um, what about Airman? I think uh, if back when it's storming ahead, I will uh, stay and do the same thing as did last th time, defend the warband, because, I mean, they're my people, and uh, I'm the shepherd of warriors, so I've got to do this. Okay, so airmen, shepherds, their warriors, and finally, Vikinda, seize control of the battle against Sarah, or defend against the threats to the warband, or indeed to the village? I think I'm going to have to challenge our uh, Blackwin and try to seize initiative as well. Fine. Okay, let's start with uh, the worm. I think let's start with the worm attacking the warband. So, Airman, uh, the challenge is 15. What do we see? What do we hear you declaim? Well, I am Eamon. I am the shepherd of warriors. And with resolve and spirit, and well blood and valor i will don't go. forget um don't forget monster hunter oh yeah the monster hunter right you're right i'm him on the shepherd of warriors and the monster hunter hello here and with resolve and spirit and blood and valor i will defend this war band um i think and you just marked and I, your and first I, highlighted fate so yeah, do you yeah. select another boon I will uh, push up my blood and valor. Oh, no, I push up my blood and my monster hunter, of course. It's, uh... And Alan, just to just to check, uh, do do I get glory from that first um, that of first round of this? Of course you do. Of oh, course cool. you do. Um, you can get fifteen glory for that. Very good. I will also ask uh, Karnonos for daring because standing against the worms seems fairly daring, and. I think some precision is also appreciated here, so I'll just deflate all my all my uh, godly favors. So that's two d four. Um, and so the worm is coming forward on its elbows, the way these worms do, about yeah. to devour the warband. What happens? I I need more d ten. Is what happens, because I am a shepherd of man. That gives me d ten, right? If yeah. I use that. Okay, and I have a d10 in resolve and uh, spirit. That is two. I need another one. So 
Uh, this is a, these are white, right? Or clear? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'd only wear fast, to be honest. There's one. Okay, so I'm, I'm still building my pool here. <laughs> and I have a D8 for my name, and then I know for my epithet, and I have a D6 for my name. And I know I have another D6 for four. No, no blood and deller. Monster Hunter oh, is yeah, a D8 yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. So I'm rolling all these to <laughs> get a 15. Be, how could this go badly? Don't say that. You're cursing it. No, it's a 17. Oh, this is not a 17. Excuse it's more me. Than that. It's an 18, it's a 22. Wow. So tell me what we see as you see off this worm as it's coming at the war band. Its sinuous neck reaching towards them. I think, uh, I mean, it's on the ground and we are more than one worm. I will just tell people where to go, where to strike. And then uh, when the, the others are busy uh, hitting the worm with their axes and swords and lances, and the worm rears up knowing that its last moment has come, I will put an arrow through its, through its eyes. Um, take 15 glory. Um, yes. What about Ethelfled and the one that is has landed it sees this happen to its comrade and now it's about to leap into the air and head to the village to wreak havoc Ethelfled, yeah, as, what do we see as it seeks to leap into the air i leap upon it and i'm going to like you know like grab this grab this worm like round the neck and try to uh try to break it to my will um oh so, my goodness so I, I ethel fled the lion-hearted uh, will contend in blood and valor and indeed in resolve and spirit with this worm to uh, uh, to, to rest it to my control here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm using a bond with the, the people of belief because I'm, I'm acting in defense of them. Uh, uh, I, can I, can I apply my, uh, uh, my, my advantage from before on this? I think the advantage, the fear, is in the brigands. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't. Uh, it's in the, no in the worms. I'll take. I'll uh, use the cunning of the Morrigan and some of the the authority of Tyrannus here, though, right? Because I'm, you know, I am trying to command this worm. I'm probably, I'm probably like declaring my titles to it as I've, uh, I've you know, leapt upon it, and I'm uh, trying to to force it to to uh, to to follow my lead. Um, so. Uh, uh, that's two, two d six, two d eight, uh, and two d fours. Um, oh uh, no, three d six, two d eight, and two d fours. And what's my target again? Uh, your target is fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, possibly I'll possibly I'll want one more uh, bond here. Let's see. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, you know what? I, I, Eamon is is uh, is 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 already is already assisting right by uh, by rallying the war band to uh, to defeat the worms, and so perhaps this worm will will see that you know we are uh, we are not folk to contend with, and it should throw in its lot with us. Does that work for you, Eamon? All right. So what? with spending that bond, I oh I need I need an additional D six on the board, so I will add one. Um, uh, this, uh, a, this will be a great da, 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 game to play in person. I just seeing these handfuls of dice come together will be great. Yes. Okay. Take one of my red ones. Oh, I've I've already I've added one at this point. Uh, all right. I've got a. Big old dice pool here. Let's 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 see what we get. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, okay, um, that's a, a twelve plus five is seventeen. Well, that exactly what you said you wanted to do happens. Um, I think I see where this is grown. You have broken a worm to your will. Yeah, uh, and you earn yes. fifteen glory. 
Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. She had, she did not, she was not sure if this would work. So uh, it's, it's a, it's a big relief to be, you know, not like mashed up between the worm's teeth, but in fact, riding upon this worm and commanding it here. Um, let's go round to Blackwind Silver Handed, uh, who is confronting the bandits, trying to seize control of this, uh, of this final finale. So Blackwind, your target is 19. Okay. Well, I think, uh, what's the dice for um, the, the great deed again? Um, I'll have you give me D8s or D10s. I've lost track. Who's used one? Can you remember? Ravenslayer, what did I give you? D8? A D10. I got a D8 from that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, D8 it is. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, unless it's uh, particularly relevant. I mean, I'm the breaker of the Storm Rider. Uh, I'll give you a D10 for that. I like to yeah. see success. Cool. I love that. <laughs> uh, I will invoke that because I think that Blackwind is basically like a full on charge through into the uh, through the men. Any men that go to oppose him as he clashes with uh, Sarah, as she wields this like arcane storm energy. And okay. uh, we'll see how that goes, obviously. So Blackwind, the silver handed, the breaker of the storm rider. Um, he uh, thinks back to uh, the many monster hunts and supernatural threats that he's faced with his uh, comrade Eamon, uh, invoking that bond for another D6. Uh, I'm also going to spend my, uh, bon my bond with Arianrod for a D12. Um, so that'll get me a D12 because I am making a precision attack against the most biggest thing. Uh, I'm going to spend two divine favors, ferocity and insight for 2D4. Uh, and also burn a pathos, so I mark that agony more than anything else for an extra D6. Uh, and then I did have a question about the Raven Feather Cloak, because I remember it being not, not like a deed or a trophy. That's having... true. It, it, it is, it is, a, it is a, a gift of the gods, so it is repeatable. I should, yeah, you, you, do not, you can use it more than once. I think yeah. I might end up being a bit more limited about how it applies, but I think a defense in a battle is entirely appropriate. Yeah, I, I feel like perhaps I shouldn't have used it in the last one. That's what uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, but I will, uh, I will use it for this one to get 3D10. So, I mean, I should really do this, right? Like, I've got so many dice. Uh, as, as, as a good friend of mine called Lowell Francis would say, what could go wrong? Yeah. Um, so let me just rack all of those up. <laughs> so we've got 2D10 down there. Uh, oh, I need 3D10, don't I? So I will... Do you have a D10 over there, Alan? Uh, yes, I think I do. Yes, uh, so I'll roll that. Um, 3d6, 2d4, 1d12, and then 2d8. Remind me where the d12's coming from? Uh, that is my bond with uh, Ariane Rods, and in the rules it says that uh, yeah. bonds with gods are d12. They are, they are. So, I've forgotten. No worries. Uh, well, I've done it, I think. Yeah, definitely done it. I've got a um, 17 plus 8, if we include in the, the divine favours as a thing. Yeah. So, oh, in fact, no, I've got, uh, on the D12, I've got a 12 flat. So I have got a 21, uh, 29. Oh, Vikinda. Blackwind just rolled a boulder up a very steep hill. What do we see Vikinda doing? I do not believe I can beat that, so um, uh, I'm not sure what to do. Well, you uh, don't want to suffer the consequences of failing against it, do you? Yeah, I, get, I figure I was going to go for like the more reasonable path of trying to get her to, uh, you know, return. You could be playing good cop and bad cop, right? Yeah, indeed, indeed. You know, uh, Blackwing has burst through, I think, her defenses. I think I, while she's doing all these, I'm whispering on the winds of the storm to uh, tell her she is defeated. There is no way to defeat uh, Black Wind of the Silver Hand with what she has, uh, burning that bond as I do so, that uh, she stands against us all, and that the best recourse would be to uh, return the uh, cauldron and seek the mercy of the, uh, the village. Let's see if you gain initiative, so to speak. So yeah, I think I will, um, I think this is, uh, I will 
shoot for a, is this, you think, arts and oration or a it, it sounded like arts and oration as a basis. Yeah, then I'll mark agony for a craft and reason. I will... Uh, Cunning plan, after all. Yeah, mark another pathos for resolve and spirit, and then... Uh, which gives you a boon. Yep. Which it's might have like, an impact. Um, yeah, I think I'll advance uh, one of those domains to a D8. So I've been... Actually, I've been using that a bit, so... And uh, why not? I'll use the uh, last two uh, divine favors of Modron. For this that is a D10, a D. Uh, oh, I need to also try and use Unquenchable. As I mean, I think I am. Uh, the storm begins raining, and I am standing uh, like fully uh, dry upon the storm. The, I, I, absorbing all the water and looking very. Let's make that a D10 just for fun. Okay, so I feel two, bad about the D8 Raven Slayer now, but so two D10, uh, D8, and uh, one, two, three D6. So there we go. Let's see. Okay. One, oh, and two D4. So do do. Let's say uh, nine, six, seven, six plus seven is 13. Oh, yeah, I'd beat it. Yeah. Yes. Did you beat 29, though? I don't think you did, did you? Oh, no, I didn't beat 29, but I beat 19. Okay. So, so, uh, so what we have then is um, Blackwind will get 19 glory, Vikinda will get 10, and Blackwind get to define the stakes, etc. in our final confrontation with her. It looks like she's not being talked down by Vikinda. She wants to make a fist of the fight. So the, uh, the final stage then is uh, whoever won the seize control, this is a black win, uh, gets to define what is the domain that this is going to be about and also what is at stake for, for her and her people. And the examples I have in my notes are death, capture, exile, change of heart, grief, torment, and on the basis of session one, marriage. Um, I think it is, um, the stakes are captured, um, turned over to the, uh, you know, uh, but Sarah's death, the bandit queen's death, the, the capture of her people to be uh, taken back to the the town of belief and okay. become those people who could show up the defenses even perhaps. And which domain? I mean, I think this is blood and valor because I think as we smash apart like the mystical defenses and the worms scatter across, Sarah uh, turns to us mad with, you know, the power of the gods uh, and unwilling to admit that it can be challenged. Okay, so we know that Sarah's, the, the, we know the stakes, we know the domain. I can tell you that it's the same, it's 19. Uh, is your target to achieve that. So I think I know what Blackwind's going to do. I'm going to come to him last. Let me go first to Eamon. Well, I have thrown away all of my uh, resources, basically. So all I can do is uh, to be the 19. That is pretty hard. It's not really possible with what I've got, even if I roll astonishingly well i cannot be the 19 so so support someone yes yeah. that's what i'm thinking i think i will support black one um and uh, are you going to lend him your resolve and spirit absolutely if he wants that yeah okay. i totally want that um let me move along to vikinda vikinda what do you do I think this is the scene where we see that she realizes combat is inevitable and she is finally, like, she brought out her shield and her cudgel, which, and like uh, Blackwind, like someone's coming up behind Blackwind and then there's just this big smack. And uh, she uh, has just clubbed this guy to death and uh, 
stands like back to back with him. I've got this side, you get that side, let's go. And I will offer up my uh, reason dice to him. Wow. Wow. Team. Team hero. Um, Ethelfled. Okay, so so like everyone else is supporting Blackwind. <laughs> this, this is this is this is uh, this is interesting. Um, what will the new girl do? Oh, there's there's like the thing is, it's a nineteen we're trying to beat. <laughs> That's just that is true. The, the math the math here uh, doesn't seem great, but I guess I but I do have that d10 advantage from before. You do. Um, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna make my own sortie here where I fly in on the back of this worm, and attempt to seize the cauldron itself. Right, like uh like you know leading the worm with the the intention of yeah scooping it up right you know taking it taking it off the board if possible. Well, let, let's do that first, because um, cause that, that might reduce that 19. Um, but I think what I want to do is to give you in advance your D10 trophy, which is that you have a worm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. So the worm is itself a trophy. I think so. Um, uh, and uh, and we'll. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hand wave whether we mark it or not. It's too cool not to have the worm intervene. So your okay, target right. is 19 to grasp the cauldron and sweep it away. Uh, that will reduce a d10 from whatever Blackwind ends up ends up facing. Does that All seem right. fair? That. That does seem fair. I'm, I'm, I'm going, going for the cauldron. Um, I am Ethel fled Lionhearted. You certainly are. Uh, uh, I, I have a worm. I have instilled fear in the, uh, in the, in the brigands, so they will scatter before me. And um, uh, I will, uh, uh, I will, I will uh, take, take the conviction of Madren to uh, to follow this through to its conclusion here you know once once you've taken the worm you you have to use the worm everyone understands so so uh what am i rolling i'm sorry it's it's so tricky um this what, what domain is this we this is Blood, all blood, blood and valor. valor yeah yeah um cool 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 so i've got d6 for my name and epithet d6 is for my name and epithet I've got a D8 for Blood and Valor. I've got two D10s for the Worm and the Advantage, a uh, a D4 for the uh, for the Divine Divine Favor, and um, I'll mark I'll, I'll mark uh, Fate to bring um, to bring Resolve and Spirit in as well as I just you know am am uh, uh, encouraging the Worm to uh, to to fly fast and true, you know saying. You, know, you are you are among heroes now. You are no longer a ravening beast of the mountain, but you you will have a name that is worthy of legends as well. Uh, so uh, so let's see how that all goes. And I will just not look at it for a moment, so that by the time I look, it will have resolved itself. Um, okay, best two are an eight and a six. That's a fourteen. Plus two from the D four. That's only a sixteen. So uh, you get a glory, but you don't get the cauldron. Um, Blackwind. What happens? Does like a does like a, a lightning bolt like strike me at the last moment? I, you, as I'm... you tell me what stops? Because you know you're, you the, the the dive bomber is on track. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's just a, there's a moment as we're, we're, we're like approaching the cauldron, you know, the bandit queen spots us and like, you know, just a blast of lightning comes, comes screaming up and like the worm, like, you know, flap, you know, like it breaks at the last minute and like the, you know, the lightning like sing, singes my hair and like the, the worm's wings as we, uh, we, you know, go like spiraling off, not having, not having succeeded at claiming the cauldron, but perhaps providing a momentary distraction. Uh, I mean, we have to see a smoke trail from the bear skin yeah. as, as, it, as you spiral away. Okay. Yeah. Black wind. Uh, it's all down to you. Yes. Uh, so, Blackwin, uh, the silver-handed, uh, 
you know, reaches into battle with blood and valor and calls upon uh, the mystic arts uh, imbued within his silver hand as well, marking pathos for resolving spirits, uh, taking me into my first fate um, thing. Uh, and then I have my 2D10 from my, uh, my boon companions, uh, which is wonderful, as uh, Iamon and Vikinda, like, take out anybody who comes, who interferes with me getting towards uh, the queen. Um, I'm going, I think this is daring. I'm going to burn a 1d4 with my patron god. Uh, and I'm also, uh, I think Aethelflaed's uh, attack was a um, distraction, you know, like occupied a force. So I'll burn that bond to oh, absolutely. d6 as yeah. well. Uh, my one question is, I'm, I'm advancing my pathos and getting fate here so I can take another boon. Uh, would that apply to this dice roll? Or yes, would that be that's, what that would apply? that's what we've been playing. So go okay. for it. Cool. Well, then I will advance one of those um, D D eight. I will advance my blood and valor to a D ten. So okay. I will, uh, So I've got all my dice pool written out so that I can just do it all in one go. Uh, okay. Cool. So I am at three three D six one D eight three. Um, 3d10? I, I, I think that you're at least a 2d8 for Silver Handed and Blood and Valor now. Oh, true. Yes, of course. Yeah, so I have uh, forgotten to add my Silver Handed even to that, I think. Um, oh, no, I think that's... No, I have forgotten to do that entirely. Um, 1d4 Daring, and then one more d6 for um, Eiffel Fled's Bond. So I have rather a lot. Uh, and I'm rolling the, uh, the additional d10 on the, on the red side as well. Um, well, I've, I've got eight and six is my highest, I think. So that's 14, 18, 18. <gasps> mm. Um, and I'm going to, uh, burn another bond to, <laughs> to uh, have, uh, someone take that, uh, well, you know, not take that, but stop me from taking the consequences of that okay. um, thing, okay. which would be more pathos, wouldn't it, I imagine? It uh, would, it would. Yeah, so I will burn, uh, I think, uh, well, Eamon or Fikinda, I suppose. I'm not sure. One of the two, uh, I guess. You can burn mine. Yeah, Eamon um, pushes me out of the way as a lightning bolt crackles outwards. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, in the words of, of the rules, the heroes lose the finale. Um, the opponent is the victor, and they avoid punishment or trouble from the battle. Strife is ascendant, and uh, the village belief slips into misery and woe. The heroes have fallen short. Oh my goodness. So you retreat back to belief with your uh, your tails between your legs the cauldron remains with the bandit queen um the strife uh that you held off uh in the village between the crafters and the religious erupts and will tear this place apart that is the destiny of belief however all is not lost for still there were great deeds so let me let me begin with Vikinda. Vikinda, which great deed or trophy do you take from this? What do you what if what do you take from this uh, this escapade? I think I will take a um, oh um, one of the wood carvings of the uh, town. Fine. Uh, so a carving imbued with learning. Yeah? That works with me. Okay, so add that to your great deeds and trophies. Um, Ethelfled, I think I know the answer to this question, but which deed or trophy do you take from the Mountains of Belief? I'll come back to Alexei. Uh, I think he's probably distracted. Uh, let's go to Blackwin. Blackwin, which deed or trophy? Um, I think 
Uh, I think the trophy is a scar. Um, it is a, the the uh, mark is the uh, scar of. Uh, what about the scorch from that lightning bolt? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just trying to think of a poetic way of uh, like scar of the storm was all I can think of. Like storm, storm scarred. scarred. Storm scarred. Yeah. <laughs> Tyrannis gets his uh, his revenge for the breaking of the Storm Rider. Mm. Um, Airman, what deed uh, do you or trophy do you take away? Um, I think uh, what I am taking away is a uh, trophy. Do I take a trophy or do I just uh, take the wor conqueror of the worm? But that is mostly as a flat. So I think I'll just uh, take as a trophy. A tooth of a worm because I'm... a worm tooth yes yeah, yeah never know that's what fine. that's good for yeah because you brought that one down with an arrow in the eye so we see you hacking a tooth uh loose one of those big canines you know okay. i have very i have a lot of experience with uh, taking trophies while on the run <laughs> very true uh let us now uh i'm just checking alexia are you back with us doesn't look like it. Um, somebody remind me that I do have to confirm that uh, what Alexi is taking away as deeds and trophies. Um, we do though need to talk now about the nature of the old developing legend. So uh, let me start with Airman. Um, I'll go to each one of you in turn. Each hero records virtues for their heroes. Um, on your so Airman. Ask the other players which virtue your hero most embodied today and why. So who do you ask first, Airman? I think I'll ask Blackman first. Is it acumen, courage, grace, or passion? Uh, I think it was acumen, to be perfectly honest. That the hunting skills, the knowledge, the you know, knowing being a professional, let's say. <laughs> Okay, so one to Acumen. Uh, who do you ask next? Um, I think next one I would ask is Vicinda. I think courage. You took on one of those huge beasts by yourself and won. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we'll come back to uh, Ethelfled's choices uh, shortly. Um, moving to Vikinda. Vikinda, who do you ask first? I'll ask Eamon. Um, I think in this case, I'm going with Grace because you you stood up and made yourself a target, and that was very I don't know. It was was very you. <laughs> Blackwin. Um. I'm going to go with, I think passion, because I think you displayed uh, devotion to your war band and your allies. Uh, okay. you, had, you had my back, you had their back. You were always there for, for the people here. And uh, we've got Alexi back. So Vikinda, ask Ethel fled. Yeah, of my legend, which do you think I improved today? Acumen, <laughs> courage, grace, or passion? Uh, I'll, I'll give you one for grace. You okay. were, you were, you had, you know, grace under pressure, including trying to offer a chance for the brigand queen to see the error of her ways. Um, and before we forget, Eamon, ask Ethelfled. Oh yeah, Ethelfled, what do you think? Where would you advance my legend? Uh, remind me the virtues, that's... Acumen, courage, grace, and passion. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with acumen because I feel like your monster hunting skills repeatedly, uh, uh, repeatedly were crucial to our, uh, our, our quest here. So you really demonstrated that, um, professionalism. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, and that logically takes us to Ethelfled. Ethelfled, uh, ask the questions of the other, of the other characters. Who will you ask first about your developing legend? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Blackwind, what, uh, wh what would you say is part of my legend now, now that I've entered into the story? 
uh, I think uh, it takes a lot of courage to to tame a worm and to ride a worm, uh, even as foolhardy as it may have proven. <laughs> there. Uh, um, uh, yeah, of uh, uh, Vicinda, uh, what what do you think? What should what should I add to my legend? It took a lot of grace to barely dodge a lightning bolt. <laughs> he literally rode the lightning. Mm. Uh, absolutely. And uh, Aemon, uh, what what do you think? I think courage because you charged into everything with, like a lion. <laughs> absolutely, lion-hearted Ethelfled. Uh, and before I leave Ethelfled on this, um, we, we everyone else has selected their deed or trophy from from uh, the Mountains of Belief. We believe that we know what you have chosen, but we just wanted to confirm. Yeah, I'm going to take this worm. Uh, its name is Thunderscale, uh, and uh, and it's it's going to it's going to earn a place in the story as well. Fine, we have a captured dragon. Brilliant. Um, it was worth you turning up just for that one, Alexi. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's virtues done. Reflection. Um, no, I haven't um, done Oh, sorry. I no guess worries. I. No worries. I. Eamon. <laughs> uh, I'll just go in character keeper order. <laughs> Would yeah, it be logical? Um, well, I'm not sure. Acumen or race. Oh, come on. It's courage. You're black woman. What else would apply? You're a soul. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be there and hit that, and that's just courage. One dimensional is the word you're looking for. <laughs> uh, I see two dimensions in passion. You are very passionate about your bloodshed. <laughs> uh, well, compliment. <laughs> and uh, Ethelfred? At the very beginning of the session, I, I asked if, uh, if anything made you quail, and you really you proved during our quest today that indeed nothing does. So one more for courage. <laughs> Predictable. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should diversify myself a bit more. <laughs> that's, that's one in a fraction dimensions, isn't it? Okay. Um, uh, finally then, because uh, we'll do the, the, the journey to the next location next time, reflection. If any player decides that their hero's epithet no longer applies, they may replace it with one that better reflects their character's nature. Uh, let me go across. Blackwing. No, the silver handed fits still. Airman. Um, does it uh, stay at the D8? Uh, it does until okay. you boon it up. Okay, then I think I will replace the monster hunter with Prince of Elna because I've always this, this time I've always been shoving this war band around, and I think they treat me like I'm nobility or something, and I kind of get used to it. So fine, Prince of Elna. Finally, Airman admits. Um, okay, what about Vikinda? I think I'll keep it right now. It may change the final game, but uh, at the moment fine. it's good. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you have some thoughts between now and next time, of course, you know, play with it. Uh, and what about Ethel Fled? Uh, I'm, I'm certainly still lion-hearted. I think I've got my eye on another um, epithet, but I'll take that when I when I earn a second epithet. Okay, because uh, you are racing down the fate, I notice. Um, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Um, so that brings us to the end of this. We will deal with the journey to the next location and the various bits and pieces there. Can I just ask? Go ahead. Um, in the contest that we lost, uh, was there any glory to be gained from any of that? Everyone got a glory. Even, okay, cool. Yeah, everyone gets one more glory for that. Okay. Because so... I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, as as so long it... as we're pleasing, you know, pleasing at least one god, aka uh, Alan, exactly. then we are gaining... I, I just wanted to ask about the best hero earns equal glory equal to the target number. Is yeah. that only on a success then? Oh yes. Okay, cool. I did <laughs> yeah. wonder. I did wonder just because that one bar is a little bit misleading and you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have to say there are a couple of places in the rules where I've got to read several bits of the book, and they're not entirely kind of ratcheted together. Um, I do though want to deal with with our our three gods, uh, because there were omens and uh, omens and portents. Um, I don't think Caridwen is happy that a that a brigand queen still has her cauldron, I have to say. So so I don't think Caridwen's offering anything. However, Tyrannis is pleased that his storms are no longer as contained as they were. So you can all mark favor with Tyrannis. 
storms coming and storms going. And I think Gofanon, the ingenious god, uh, a hoard of great value. Uh, and I think you have taken away from this both, uh, we've got Vicinda taking a carving that imbu is imbued with knowledge and we've got Ethelfled taking a worm away. Um, I think that Gofanon thinks that you are an ingenious bunch, so you will gain divine favour with Gofanon. Um, there's, am I, uh, am I not looking right or, oh, I found it, thank you. Yeah. And just to, and just to check, is that, that's favour we mark and that's in addition to the uh, to the stars that are are getting marked, kind of. I, in I, the I'm going to I'm, I'm going to mark those two stars now. Um, so you satisfy Tyrannus and Gofanon, because mm -hmm. you didn't satisfy the third god. Quite difficult to do. Um, you do not get a boon for that. Do we not get a wrath? Um, no, I don't think Caridwin is going to invoke wrath on you. I think if I'm in a longer series, I might want to get into wrath, but I think I want to stay slightly above the water in terms of of, of that. Um, mm -hmm. So, so you have got those uh, those favors from those two, and um, next time there'll be an opportunity to celebrate the gods and earn some more. Yeah. Um, so I think that's us done. I would like a quick canter down the stars and wishes, um, just to see if I can tailor something to meet your wishes particularly. Um, can we go, let's go in reverse character keeper order just for fun. So Alexi, any stars? Yeah, uh, absolutely. This was a lot of fun. Thank you everyone for, for welcoming me in, uh, partway through. Um, I think, uh, yeah, a big star to, uh, Sabine for, for Aemon kind of coming into his own. Uh, I, uh, I, I loved that we had a epithet change at the end to reflect how Ammon's, you know, becoming such a, uh, such a leader of men and a, you know, a, a prince among, uh, w uh, warriors, uh, during this, uh, during this series. So, um, huge star there and, uh, st start to you, Alan, for, uh, uh, for kind of keeping, keeping things kind of glorious, even as we, uh, we, we failed somewhat because it felt like, well, it, it felt like there was a session where the dice mostly weren't in our favor, but you still, you know, allowed things to feel kind of epic and our heroes to feel heroic in the face of, you know, uh, as it turned out, insurmountable odds. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, uh, Sawyer, any stars? Yes, uh, stars for, you know, strangling a worm into obedience. Um, sharpening your axe on your own hand which is just a beautiful mental image and uh, the story of a uh, true love between a kidnapped uh, princess and her rescuer <laughs> and it was uh or a runaway princess and uh it it was i just love that beginning scene so you know i had this idea of Eamon as like this hard like hard hard guy i was like no i love her she's wonderful it, like really opened my eyes on him uh, yeah, yeah. Not not all dark age weddings are simply matters of state. Um, uh, Sabine, any stars? Yeah, stars. Stars to Alexi for jumping in with both feet. That was uh, very neat, and I I really like the character. And of course, uh, as always, stars to Blackwin for being Blackwin. <laughs> I just she's so he's so reliable. I mean, it's uh, I think Eamon feels like okay, this this guy. Right, you can. He's a rock. He's just a solid object that won't be moved. And uh, stars to Vicinda for trying to talk to people and, and uh, uh, using cunning instead of just punching things. That was also very neat. Thank you. And finally, Will, any stars? Um, yeah, Ethel Fred's uh, worm taming uh, was the best. Vikinda <laughs> uh, uh, having my back. I know I even did as well, but like I loved, uh, you know, the, the full on support of everything. That was great. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my big one, here's uh, Eamon's epithet changing, because uh, it really ties back into that last adventure we did in Aoton Wood and the, um, you know, Blackwing just saying, like, come on, you're the leader, lead. Like, <laughs> Uh, and now he is. Um, and Alan, for I, I'm enjoying all of like, you know, the reskinning of what must what I can imagine in the Greek setting. And the, I imagine these were like harpies or something originally. Uh, I couldn't possibly comment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, and for the clarity of all the explanations around the the rules and things, because I think it'd be very easy to get lost. And uh, I think every time we run into a snag, it's really 
well explained you know I, I, I'm, I'm 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 happily pleased and slightly surprised because uh, i have to say I'm, i feel like i'm wrestling these to two falls in submission um but yeah my stars i think yeah epithet change yes lovely final admission um uh i but, you know alexi it's always great to have you in a game and you went in absolutely you know full-on hero i'm not going to just dispatch a worm i shall tame it um and and yeah uh, sorry the, the the effort to to kind of to to try to talk her down but also and i want to spread this about to all of you you began today i think to think about the narrative first and go for some some approaches or adopt some approaches that work you know you're not always defaulting back to which domain is highest and that's what i'll do so i, I thought that was really nice um and yeah black win ever reliable <laughs> I mean, I still fail the dice roll, so not that reliable. <laughs> well, you know, uh, predictable, yeah. then. Predictable. Yeah, yeah, it was so yeah. close. It was, it was, it was <laughs> by one, right? The fact that you've left the mountains in a, in a state of strife and chaos, you know, stuff happens. Maybe that's what the gods want. Um, wishes. Uh, let me go back round uh, to you, Alexi. Do you have any wishes for next time? Wow. Um, I, you know, just just want to see uh, more more challenges. Uh, maybe maybe see us you know succeed at them. But I think uh, I think I think it's all right if uh, if it's still you know still plenty difficult. Right, we've got a bunch of sources to draw on as long as we have you know the, the kind of you know the scope to 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 test our metal and skill against you know whatever the gods throw away. I'm gonna be happy. Fine. Uh, what about you, Sawyer? wish for uh, the random number generator gods to look favorably upon us that that really that, that's the god we should have uh, play, uh pleased and placated today yeah yeah um, oh fortuna for oh, for oh fortuna indeed oh fortuna uh you have it i'll sing it um what about you sabine i have to say i'm a bit with keith about the system it's not my system i stick it out for the last one but i would not sign up for this again this was the particularly I, I would wish that we got more to talk to each other as the, the characters the players and um yeah that that was uh, something i would really wish for because it was mostly like what do you do what do you do what do you do and everybody did something at the end it came together and i like loved that but at the beginning, it was like, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I, it, and I don't know if it's a wish that the rule system can supply, to be honest. I think it, yes. it's, it's, very, it's very compartmentalized and broken down. I think across a longer series where, where I wasn't feeling quite as pressured to get a full location finished in a session, I think this is a four-hour session game, really, to give it a bit of breathing space. Um, simply stepping through the, the stages, I think I'm coming to that conclusion. And it, were I were on again, I think I would probably make them four hour sessions. That's hard work, but I think it needs a bit more space than three. And in the same way, I think breaking it across two, I can't see an, a neat way to do that. But I, I no, I'd, I'd, embar I'd, I'd embrace that. And yeah, the dice are vicious. Um, Will, any wishes? Um, I mean, you know, the easy DC is one. I, I kind of like the competitive stuff, but uh, I think it's, me and my whole uh, I guess problems with like a lot of dice pool games beyond a certain size where you spend a lot of time building something up and then the right the RNG just means that like it's yeah it's a lot of a lot of time and thought spent towards mm. like not reaching something you know um, but you know I think that's the system I, I think that's the system again with that broad strokes and then resolving rather than actual character interaction uh, yeah, I like it. But uh, I think as an actual wish that's like, you know, within the realms of the system and everything like that is that, um, you know, like, despite being chosen by the gods and all of this stuff, um, Blackwind's very much of a mind that no gods, no masters, no kings, no, um, you're just another thing more powerful than a bully and all of that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I will, not a wish, uh, you know, let's see how it goes, but uh, spit in the eyes of the gods, basically, even as I do their bidding kind of thing. Um, uh, yeah, I just noticed something in the chat. Would you all add a glory, please? Would we all, add a, all add a glory. One... Just add a glory. Will okay, you because, bonus because, glory. Because my name die will go up if I do that. It will. And that's what Alexi pointed out. And I hadn't clear okay. it. And it just seems that 
that ought to be a thing that happens. <laughs> okay, folks, thank you. I'm going to end the recording. So wave bye-bye to the internet.